name's John Irwin. I'm the managing director of Bisley. We are Europe's largest manufacturer of steel storage. Uh, the business was founded by Mr. Brown. Uh, his son Tony Brown is here, here today and he will talk about the background. As far as the background to the company and the history. As far as the UK market is concerned, we saw a severe contraction three or four years ago along with the rest of the world. Uh, we, we dropped 30 to 40 percent in terms of size along with the, the European markets and the North American markets. The office furniture industry is a worldwide industry these days and all the big companies represented worldwide. So when there's a recession, we have, we have, course, a, we have course a hit. The UK market has shown an improvement in the third quarter of this year by an increase of 12 percent. That's not enough of an increase of a long enough period for us to believe there's a major turn in the market because we have got some particular problems to the UK which is cut back in government spending. The government announced some drastic cutbacks in, uh, in the budget and we've yet to see how that will affect our industry in the UK but it, it can't be good news. However, the market has survived. We're currently at around about, the UK market's currently at 600 million turnover, down from its peak of a billion three or four years ago. Uh, and we probably have a few more years to run at that particular size before we see, see, see an increase. However, the office furniture business will survive. The major companies are very resilient because they have good names, good brands, good people, and hopefully good balance sheets as well to sustain these difficult times. But we are, of course, we're optimistic. Uh, in our own case, we are concentrating on exporting, and we're certainly doing 40% and we're hoping to grow our exports. Uh, we are helped by the, the, the weak pound against the euro, which just allows us to compete in the European markets. My father started it um, in 19... just after the war. And um, 1946, 47, we were making. Uh, we were doing war work then, but all the war work, war work finished. And then he, um, anyway, and uh, we were making sack trucks and um, things like that. And then somebody came along in 1948 with a waste paper tub and said, "Can you make this?" And uh, my father looked at it and quoted him a price. Said, "We got an order for 24 waste paper tubs in 1948." And um, I joined the company in 1960. But no one else would employ me. And um, then uh, my father wanted to sell the business. I owned 3% of it. And uh, we were turning over then £300,000 a year. And um, I had to raise £400,000, which I did do. And um, I spent many, many years in debt. But now we seem to be going a lot better. We've got a very good staff. <laughs> That's good. Um, tell me about the, how the product mix developed from this uh, waste basket to what we see here today. Well, it just gradually grew. My father, actually, his main profession was a sheet metal worker for beating up pan uh, damaged cars. And he only made these um, waste paper tubs, you know, on the basis he just happened to meet somebody at a cocktail party or something like that. And um, anyway, then it grew. We made little multi-drawer cabinets, and uh, we did introduce a two-door cupboard. Um, but we were very fortunate in those days. You see, every time a recession came along, we used to introduce a new product line. So I do remember in 1980 we made our first filing cabinet, and he wanted to make 50 a week to stop making sort of two or three people redundant. Now we make 6,000 a week, I think. Um, the same thing happened with a metal pedestal. Nobody in the UK made a metal pedestal. We uh, had a slight recession. I looked around the marketplace and we thought, well, now we're doing 3,000 a week of them. Um, there was uh, the side opening timber cover. They're only made in France. I looked around and, uh, you know, just to avoid making a few people redundant, I thought, well, why not have a go at those? How many week can we do? A few thousand, totally. A few thousand a week. So, you know, but. It's a lot more difficult now. There are two major problems. We're big into storage, but we're very big with other OEMs. So seating manufacturers and desking manufacturers in the UK t tend to look to us to do the storage element of any contracts they get. That's very strong with us. 
equally too. I mean, the industry does tend to be very cyclical. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I think actually that, you know, two, three years ago, we we're all busy and uh, making big profits and the rest of it, reinvesting it or saving it and the rest of it. And, um, but, you know, we're all suffering at the moment. We never had an hourly paid redundancy, and my function in life really is the sentimental value, just to try and look after people's jobs as best I can. And um, that's the reason we still have the Disney factory, I think. Anyway, um, no, I, I'm not very good at explaining it. I had an operation on my brain, you see, so um, I don't recollect things as well as I used to. What keeps you uh, motivated, excited, and yeah, back to work each day? Um, one, I've got nothing else to do, <laughs> which is most important. I mean, you know, otherwise I'd lay in bed all day, I suppose, <laughs> without having to get up. Secondly, I do feel a sentimental attachment to a lot of the old timers who've been working for us. I feel there's an obligation on the company to look after these people as best I can. So. Um, it's dumb, really, but... Um, you know, you read in balance sheets that people say that, you know, the best, you know, we'd like to thank our most valuable asset, our workforce. Well, you know, the first thing that happens when there's a downturn in business, they get rid of their, you know, they lay off their most valuable asset, self-described, and say, well, but, you know, we just try and hold on to our people as best we can. And we haven't done any short time working, but we're, you know, we've been down to 39 hours a week. But um, I just feel there's an obligation on the company to look after its people. You see, I'm an old sentimentalist. I, I've grown up on the manufacturing side of any business. But, you know, you, you have the best salesman in the world. You can sell a dud product once. You can still have the best sales force in the world as we have. But they've got to sell the product more than one. So a lot of it does depend upon the goodwill and the attitude of the fellows that make it. At sales, we can only sell a product three, for three reasons. Well, we've got to have tops in three, price, service, and quality. And if you can top the market in all three of those, then you can look after your people as best you can, and that's really what we're trying to do. Do you feel there's areas that the company uh, can still expand in? Uh, any, any added products? You know, they, here's another recession. Have you thought about... The, the, what's next for the company? We have actually. We're um, investigating new market areas, not in desking or seating, I hasten to add, because we're so reliant upon the office equipment um, market in the UK and in France and the rest of it, where we do tie up with desking manufacturers and seating manufacturers and we offer our storage. So we can't go into either of those markets on the basis it would upset our marketplace. But we are, we have actually just, um, you know, just been through the exercise of trying to, we've got all the machinery there. We've probably got the most advanced metal office machinery factory in Europe. So it doesn't really mean to say we can't make other products outside office storage, as long as they're metal based. So we are going through an exercise at the moment of looking for additional market areas outside our traditional market. Because there's nothing we can, you know, having been through, you know, uh, say filing cabinets, um, pedestals, um, timbers, lateral filing units. Um, there's nothing else we can naturally do. We can do more ornate things than the rest of it, and some of them are very good, and some of them are very popular. But um, none of them is going to sort of hold the business together the same way as, you know. I just get very upset about the uh, cyclical nature of the business we're in. We're all going through the mill at the moment, particularly the manufacturing side. So we do need to um, look outside the office furniture market for steel-based products. 